welcome back. For my very last tutorial in this series, I thought rather than looking at another module, I would look at Python in general and how you can write good code. And generally there are lots of best practices in Python, but they keep changing and I'm not going to be able to tell you them all. So instead, I will show you the Zen of Python. But before we look at the Zen of Python, there's this nice Easter egg where if you import hello, it says hello world, which most people don't know about, but you know now. And the second one is importing this. You get this poem called The Zen of Python by Tim Peters, who is a good friend of Guido van Rossum. But before we look at the poem itself, which we'll do line by line, uh, I'm going to open the file that contains this. And you can see that the poem is gibberish, that's then encrypted here uh, and printed properly. So uh, I'm not sure why that was necessary, but uh, it's part of the joke that you'll see. Because while the poem has 20 commands and lists only 19, it's uh, very serious in uh, the way the design is done. So the first line is beautiful is better than ugly. And I've tried to illustrate this with a very ugly function that checks if something is even and does this by checking if the last digit is a 2, 4, an 8, a 0, or a 6. And uh, you can see that you know there is bad spacing, the variables are inconsistent. Uh, we've got this back operator here. And uh, the idea of checking whether a number is even by looking at the last digit is in itself ugly and instead we can just check if the number mod 2 is 0. The next line is explicit is better than implicit and I think the best way to illustrate this is with a numpy trick. So we have an array which is a numpy array and you can see it's just the numbers 1, 2 and 3 and then we say array none and it's unclear what that's done. But if we actually add array numpy.new axis, then we see what it's doing is adding a new axis to the beginning. So it's converting our array from a list of three numbers into a list that contains a list of three numbers, but obviously as a numpy array. And if you just put this and no one had seen it, it would be unclear what's happening. But uh, if you look at this numpy new axis, then you can either guess what's happening or look it up. There are many examples where being explicit is very necessary because it's not just someone else that might read your code later and not know what it means, but it might be you. Next, simple is better than complex. So we have this array, which is now the numbers one to four, and we add one to all the numbers and then convert it into a numpy array. And you see we've got a lambda and a map function when you, know, you can just convert it and add one. And so this second simple solution is a lot better than the complex one. But then complex is better than complicated. So if you ever want to send an email, you could try doing it with Socket. And uh, it's more of an interesting networking task than something you'd ever do. Because there are libraries like smtplib, which are a bit, a bit more complex, but uh, not as complicated, and Google API client, which is quite complex but makes things very easy to use because it handles most of the complexity for you. Flat is better than nested. This is a general rule about storing things because if you create this hierarchy, it tends not to add any meaningful information. It just adds confusion and uh, makes it more strict for how things are organized. Because, you know, what if you have something that's maybe not a continuous distribution and is not a discrete distribution, it's kind of a mix of both. You know, it's unclear where you might add this. Um, whereas here, if you just have a set of random distributions or random functions, you can just have everything in there and it becomes very simple for someone to look up. Sparse is better than dense. So the bottom code, which is very sparse, is something that I actually wrote. And if I could actually put that all in one line, and when I was younger, I used to spend a lot of time trying to 
put as much information as I can on a single line of code. And if you want to do that, you can actually play this thing called Code Golf, where the aim is to use the minimum number of characters. But uh, generally, if I asked someone what this does, it would be a lot harder to figure out, despite the meaningful function names, than if they went through this, where we're clearly resizing the image, filtering it with a kernel, drawing a line, and then writing it to something. Readability counts. This is kind of the general thing and probably the most important rule. Code is read by humans, at least at the current stage, and so having meaningful identifiers, among other things, is very important. You know, if you wrote M is this and N is this, and then you get 100 lines later in your code, and you try and remember which one was minimum and which one was maximum, you probably struggle. But if you have one called max value and one called min value, it's a lot easier. And most modern editors, especially this one, will allow you to autocomplete values. So you don't need to worry about having longer names. You can just type in the first few letters and press enter. Special cases aren't enough to break the rules. There are many conventions and rules. And generally, if something's a special case, it probably means you're doing it wrong. So say I want to set this object's private variable to zero, what I should do instead is write a reset function for this object rather than accessing a private variable. And there are many other examples where you might decide you can do a quick hack, but actually it's because of a fundamental issue in your code. Although practicality beats purity. So this is quite similar to this one where you don't necessarily need everything to be pure you know you don't have to write every function that you could possibly use and make things as pure as possible and if you're generating a prime number you might just need a probable prime and this would be a lot quicker to do errors should never pass silently this is very important because lots of people will wrap their code in a try and accept loop and if it fails it doesn't matter because maybe you know you're running this every five minutes whereas quite simply you could just have a logging line here that saves your exception and adds the error with the, the type of error and the message. Unless maybe it's explicitly silent. So if you're uploading the progress and there's some error that says, you know, you're not connected to the internet, you don't need to try again. You can just upload it later. Another one lots of people do is in the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. If your program failed and then works the next two times, that doesn't necessarily mean the program is fixed. One reason it might have failed the first time is quite simply that it was still loading. And maybe you need to know that so that if you're running it when your computer starts and it needs to wait an extra minute, you have a line of code that says, wait one minute before executing the program. And this applies to many other things as well but uh, you should make sure you know exactly what your code does rather than guessing especially if you're copying someone else's code and uh, maybe you think that putting things together has worked when you've got the wrong thing in the wrong place there should be one and preferably one obvious way to do it uh, this is uh, something python has failed in the string formatting sense there are actually three ways to format strings, and I've listed what you shouldn't do and what you should do here. And they both do exactly the same thing, but this one is nicer. And generally, if you're writing code, then having two ways of doing things isn't great because it means that someone will pick different ways and it will be confusing. Also, having just one way to do things means that there may be another way of doing things that is more obvious. And it says here that that way may not be obvious at first unless you're Dutch. And that might mean that if something doesn't feel like it's an obvious way of solving a problem, then either the problem needs uh, modifying or there's a better way and you need to do more research to find what it is first. I know that I spend a lot of time looking for solutions to problems and I often find that there was a better way of doing things earlier on. and then I decide to rewrite that bit of code so that when I come back to it, I know it's been done in the obvious way.
now it's better than never. So you can see here that we have a function that will do something in the most optimum manner. And the reality is this function might never be written because you're planning, uh, you have other things going on, and you never get around to it. Uh, whereas instead you might have a task and you just write out version 1, not very good. Maybe it even breaks some of these rules, but you go back and fix it and uh, you've got optimization left to do. And that means that things get done. And uh, a great example of this is in task scheduling. The more time you're spending scheduling tasks, the less time you're doing other the actual tasks. And although now is better than right now, it means you might just rush in, write a function, and then never use it at all. If the implementation is hard, it's a bad idea. If you can't really explain something, uh, and you put a, a general comment like it's, it's a complex algorithm, then it's probably a bad idea because code should be simple, concise, and be able to express something very easily. And if it's easy to explain, it might be good. So maybe in both these examples, you're picking n random things from a list. In this one, you just shuffle it and then take the first n. And here you have some complex algorithm that keeps doing it. And you know this one's very easy to explain. And that's why I might say, if I'm going to pick n numbers from this list, I'll just use the second method. And then the final line is namespaces are one honking great idea. Let's do more of those. Uh, if you're not familiar with namespaces, they are spaces to put names in. Uh, they are a way of assigning variables to a specific thing. Uh, and that thing might be a class, it might be a global variable, uh, but you do it rather than by typing out the variable name in your code, you do it a kind of a more fluid way. And so here I've got these definitions where x is 5 and y is 6. And one way that doesn't involve namespaces is to execute each line of this definition. Uh, and if you ever do that, then someone will murder you because this puts horrendous vulnerabilities in your code because someone could just type in x's and then have an operating system of command that deletes all your files or something more malicious. Whereas here, if you know that it's meant to be in this format, x equals y, uh, then you split the assignment and you use locals, which is a namespace, and you assign the variable name to it. And that also gives you these values of x and y. And you could do that with globals. This could instead be a class and you use bars. And this is a nice way of saving things in a more general way than just having hard-coded variable names. So while this doesn't cover all of the best practices of Python, uh, and they'll keep changing, it does cover some more general principles of programming, because after all, the aim of coding is to take a series of instructions in your head and convey them in code that a computer can run. Code is read and written by humans, although that's obviously going to change more in the future, but the reality is eventually there are still going to be humans looking at code. And if you want to find bugs, having meaningful identifier names, for example, makes your code clearer for you to work on and improve. And with so many people working in teams, having code that you're struggling to understand is going to make it impossible for anyone you're working with. So hopefully you look at this video and you can use it to become a better programmer rather than just someone who, who programs better, which are different things. You've learned some neat tips and when you're stuck on what to do, you just type in import this.